Yugoslavia is best known as that big goofy country from the 70s that turned into six little countries in the 90s, amid an orgy of rape and nightmare war. The breakup of Yugoslavia led to a period of such heinous interethnic violence, including acts of outright genocide. It seemed amazing that they had ever been able to live together in the first place. At the end of World War II, Joseph Marshall Tito Braz united the six Balkan republics into a massive socialist federation, despite the fact that, historically, they all wanted to kill each other. When Tito died, the old ethnic tensions reawoke, and the republic started to break away. First Slovenia, then Macedonia, then Croatia, then Bosnia, and eventually Montenegro, leaving Serbia the last republic to carry the torch for the old Yugoslavia. Oh yeah, Kosovo broke away too, if you consider that a country. It's been 10 years since the end of the wars, and since the man widely considered their architect, Serbian President Slobodan Milosevic, was bulldozed out of office. All of the former Yugoslav republics have now applied for membership in the European Union. At the same time, the Balkans is still a byword for barbaric acts of violence, and the entire region occupies a sort of threshold state between Europe and, well, not Europe. So we went to the Balkans to find out once and for all if Yugoslavians are just like you and me, Yugoslavians. pretty well except that the fuel gauge is literally doing this so we have to guess when we're out of gas and uh, me and the uh, passenger seatbelts are tied together I forgot about that <laughs> so we're going to Yugoland and that's a um, kind of a farm mixed with an amusement park that uh, is supposed to capture the, the memory of Marshall Tito's Yugoslavia Tell you one thing about Yugoland, they don't they don't advertise very well. There were no there were no signs on the highway for it. And it is in the middle of a very, very, very tiny village. Yugoland's website advertises it as a full-service amusement park in northern Serbia based on the former Yugoslavia. It has different sections for each of the old constituent republics, except for Kosovo. So we couldn't think of a more perfect place to get oriented for a road trip through the scattered remnants of old Yugoslavia. This is Yugo Land. It's, uh, it looks like it's kind of just in the backyard of someone's house. I think we might have missed the missed most of the action. This might be the sober committee. Sounds like stuff's still going on in the background. Yugo Land seemed pleasant enough, if a bit old and rustic. Not a lot of teenagers so far. Nor a lot of ladies. <laughs> Blaško Gabaric is Yugoland's founder, a Serbian printmaker turned Canadian turned eventual Yugoslavian superfan, and is generally what people of the region refer to as quite a character. When they try to destroy Yugoslavia, I made Yugoland there. Okay. You can see it. This is the peace bridge. Okay. You can photograph the peace bridge. We go across the peace bridge. Inside of Yugoslavia, we don't have no fights. Uh -huh. Nine years so far, you don't see anybody arguing. Nine years and counting. Everybody's happy. Pretty good. Yeah. You can see here. Do you see any any sad faces? No. Yes, they are old, but they are happy. Yeah. Uh, watch them. They are singing. They even pay the music to play them. And I give them to enjoy. Like a, like.
like Maria Theresia. Yeah. She was helping the yeah. people who could need a house. Yeah. I do that, yeah. Yugaland turned out to be less of an amusement park than a park park, and really less of that than a yard with some picnic tables and a lot of tipsy Serbians. Nevertheless, its amenities include a bandstand, soccer fields, a reflecting pool in the shape of the Croatian coastline, and a scale model of Slovenia's Mount Triglav. We brought so many uh, truck road, then three bulldozers came and pushed the ground up, and they was working here like ants to, to, to make the mountain Triglav high. The most important amenity, however, is a fervent and unconditional love for Yugoslavian's late partisan leader, Marshal Tito. I am very happy I lived in Tito's time. It yeah. was my pleasure to live in that time. And it's pleasure to think about him, mm -hmm. and pleasure to cherish his work, what he did to the poor people. No man so far in the planet did that for the working class. Marshal Tito is extremely beloved for a dead communist dictator. Even coming from an American perspective, I always had a pretty vaunted impression of him. He was like the dictator who cares. Minimal human rights violations, genuine popular support, and he was one of the only communists with the balls to tell Stalin where to smoke it, or where to stuff it, however that saying goes. And on top of that, he fucked Elizabeth Taylor. Probably. So all in all, not a terrible guy to worship. The guest of honor at Yugoland this year is Tito's grandson, Though we get the feeling the family charm may have skipped a couple generations. You can see the one board where is now. Uh, the picture is destroyed a little bit uh -huh. because the cold weather yeah. uh, breaks. It's outside. That's the funeral of Marshal Tito. Yeah. May of four. 1980, Tito died. Yugoslavia complete was crying. The whole world was sad. Mm -hmm. Everybody came from every country from this earth to planet to say to Tito goodbye. Now you can recognize many of them. Yasser Arafat. Hey! Yeah. And now you have English king. Yep. Oh, uh, or the crown prince. Yeah, Whatever. crown prince. Crown That's prince. Nice. That's what I know. Now the Brezhnev. Yep. Saddam Hussein and uh, uh, Hungarian uh, Hungarian president. A real who's who? Mm, uh, U.S. president anywhere here? No. Was Carter no, was Reagan uh, by that no, point. No, there is the English lady. Oh, it's Thatcher. Ma yeah. Margaret Thatcher. She's somewhere. Do you know any other funeral? When Kennedy dies, how many people was there? A few. A few. Yeah. Elvis had a pretty good bit. Well, Pretty big but not the, from the whole country. Yeah, no. And they was the top people from the leading country. They said to me, when Tito dies, Yugoslavia will fall apart. I said, come on, guys, you must be crazy. We have great country. Why should we fall apart? Never could, why the heaven should be falling apart? Because everybody wished to be in heaven. Right. We had the heaven. Why should we fall apart? After the falling Yugoslavia apart, our people is very poor today. Mm -hmm. We can, thanks to America, they made the hell in the heaven. Mm -hmm. And I wish them, now, if you believe in God, the God, what does God do to America today? How many of those uh, twisters you have? Oh, yeah, a bunch. Uh -huh. like Why? Uh... The twister hits only South America. Why does it hit any other country in Europe? Why? You made God mad, thanks to the rich people or the capitalists. <laughs> Yugoland's a pretty harmless exercise in nostalgia. What's creepy, though, is the part where it's mostly Serbs getting together in Serbia to celebrate their Yugoslav history, all while neatly stepping over the decade their country spent committing war crimes in Bosnia and Croatia and Kosovo. You also have to remember that during the 90s, when the wars were going on and Vlaška was just getting into its Yugoslavian heritage, Serbia was still Yugoslavia, Milosevic's Yugoslavia. Go, Yugoslavia! While the Yugolanders sort of represent the feel-good version of the Balkans' past, basically retreading decades-old national propaganda ad nauseum, another group of Serbs have been barreling into the future with a trunk full of smuggled drugs to a soundtrack of pumping turbo folk.